Hi, I'm Damon Bonser, founder and CEO of British Design Fund, and I'm joined today by Nate Makabuag of Koala, one of our most recent investments. How are you doing, Nate? Oh, very good. Looking forward to chatting. Cheers for having me. Good to have you with us. Um, yeah, look, just a quick session to tell everyone all about, all about um, Koala and the amazing things you guys are doing, and also give a chance to our investors to, to see some of the founders behind the businesses. So um, look, should we, should we kick off? Um, do you want to tell us a bit about yourself and background and, and what it is Koala is all about? Yeah, sure. So I mean, um, grew up East London, went to study mechanical engineering at Imperial College after a brief stint living in Essex and whatnot. Um, and it was while at uni at Imperial College that I fell into prosthetics, almost purely because we wanted to, you know, for engineering nerds, we wanted to make an Iron Man suit. But fortunately, we got introduced to probably like the coolest guy I've ever met, Alex Lewis, who, aside from being an adventurer designer, just all around great person, he's a quadruple amputee, so he uses prosthetics. And so went from like a fun project of just messing around to like, oh no, we want to make something useful for him. Um, and went from there and I haven't looked back since. And so what that led us straight on to was realizing that, well, I've actually got some. So in a nutshell, today, uh, modern day prosthetics still look like this. So they're still super rigid, heavy, hard to use, uncomfortable and super hard to get. So this arm is 25,000 pounds and you need it bespoke fitted by a clinician who needs to be there and make it to you. So, and how long would it take to make that? Between, if you get really quick, say six weeks, and that's if you going forward and backwards to get multiple fittings. And if it doesn't fit, then you've got to start the whole process over again. But, you know, I've met people who have been waiting months. I've met some people who have been waiting years and it's still not fitting because that's rigid and we're squishy. And so it's a fundamental problem. And then around the world, you can imagine if limb loss, which as it is, is concentrated in middle, low income countries, there just aren't the clinicians. There isn't the infrastructure to get it. So 90% of people uh, around the world who need it just get nothing. They just yeah. have to learn to live without it. You just learn to live without it. And most things people find ways of doing, but there's such a huge loss of human potential because everyone has that thing that they really love doing and they've lost the ability to do it. Whether it's as like basic as like eating or something more aspirational. Like, I want to paint, I want to do this sport, I want to, you know, and that's that sucks. So, you know, we set up Koala purely, first and foremost, just a support service to be there for any person with limb loss to make whatever they need and get it to them wherever they are on the planet. And the way we do that is first of all, it's just being user driven. So we just talk to people, understand their needs, but because everything we make is designed sort of around the fact that humans are squishy and that if we need things that are comfortable to wear and enjoyable to wear, then that's sort of like clothes. So everything we make is soft. So we make soft prosthetics it's called what we invented. Uh, never been done before why i couldn't tell you because they're so simple so they're much cheaper but the really cool thing in terms of accessibility point is that you can fit these like shoes now so you can send it through the post to literally anywhere on the planet you know we, we started in the uk but we've sent stuff as far away as canada syria sierra leone um just like any other item of clothing or goods and they can fit it and we do it all straight through the internet so um and oh, amazing. So was there was there kind of like a eureka moment then for for when you came up with this sort of vision and this this, this product? Yeah, well, I mean, it all it all stemmed from Alex Lewis. I you know I wouldn't I can't overstate that enough because um, we started thinking that okay if you've lost your hand you need a hand back. So we were designing really complicated bionic things like what academics had told us to do and what we'd seen on TV. So we spent months and months and months making this really complicated device um, for Alex. And all he wanted to do was be really comfy, really simple, uh, and at a price that if he wanted to go online and get one, he could. He didn't have to raise money for it. And if he wanted it sent to his house, he could do that. So we took that and still decided, yeah, buy one account, that would be the thing to do. Uh, but I couldn't quite get it to do what he wanted, which was design and draw and hold pens. Um, so what I instead bought was a 50 pence pen clip from Amazon just stuck on the palm. So I had this really complicated hand and it's like, you click the pen and then the hand comes around it. Great. And we couldn't quite figure out how to attach it to him. So we were like, let's use some fabric. 
making a bag shape and strap it on. Anyway, he tried it and he was like, guys, I love this. This is amazing. I'm like, really? You really like it? And, he's, and he was like, yeah, the, the best thing about this, this pen clip, I love it. And I'm like, but Alex, look at the fingers, look at the delicately architected, you know, designs. He's like, I don't need any of that complex stuff. This pen clip and how comfy the sleeve is, I love it. And that was kind of like a, it was painful to hear because it's a waste of the last year of my life, but it wasn't, it was sort of like, oh, wow. I didn't realize how much you could do with simple stuff and how useful that is because that's really easy to make and get to people. Um, and that's was sort of like a, we've got to follow this through. So you talked, so you sort of briefly mentioned um, Alex. So do you want to talk, do you want to let us know kind of the, the, the core team, who else there is apart from you? Yeah, so there's our CEO, Ewan, who um, has had a, bit, a lot of experience in med tech, on his own med tech company, um, but did a philosophy background. So he's like a really smart, guy that understands the inner workings of companies but he's a person he understands how to work with people and you can talk to him um he's amazing and then alex lewis who is sort of like our you know our our, our north star we just come to him whenever we want to understand about a product or a service and and what he has hammered into us is that this isn't a device this is a support network so he's really structured koala into you know, half of what we do is, is we have people just at the end of the phone, just so you can talk to them and they give advice. And that's as valuable as the bits we make. Um, and it's a sort of an end to end support crutch for anyone with limb difference. And uh, that will stem from him really. And I understand you, there's, um, there's a ch charitable element to your business currently. Yeah. I mean, I always like, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a businessman I've engineering background so we fell in love with the problem and just fell in love with just being useful we just want to be useful to people and we always found that the people who needed it most were the people who were being overlooked people who couldn't afford prosthetic limbs you know I mean it's the 25,000 pounds a pop that's most people but and then people in rural communities in you know remote parts of the planet that have no way of accessing this stuff they're the ones that always touch us the most and so that's where we focus our energy because no one else is. And what that attracts is just like the most amazing like-minded organizations, mostly charities. So an example of that is in the UK, uh, Douglas Bader Foundation, who saw us right early on and gave us our first grant of like three grand to like go and mess around and make some stuff. And, and recently we teamed up just at the end of last year, they came back and said, and said look, what you're doing is awesome. The way you're looking after people, um, what would it take to do this for every child in the UK? And we're like, that's so cool. Let's do that. And so that became Project Limitless and that's going really well. And so with their support, we're essentially looking after every child in the UK with limb loss um, and giving them advice, support and send them any soft prosthetics they need to just be kids, you know, just, just do what kids do. That's good. And we'll, <clears throat> below this video will be a link through to that uh, charitable part of it. It's, it's, um, yeah, it's, very, it's very important. It's, um, it's impressive you guys are making such, having such an impact on, on kids' lives here. Um, so do you, what, do you, what do you see as some of the sort of big challenges and hurdles as your, as your business grows over the next few years? What, what are you kind of, what's on your horizon and, and what do you kind of, what do you think will, will, will possibly pro, 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 uh, like present some challenges, but, but kind of and how you'll work around them? Well, they're all like the chat, but they're exciting challenges. And I mean, I think that there's, there's two, and both those sort of come from, or a main reason why I'm like really excited to work with the design fund, the British Design Fund. So, you know, this is great for us. Um, and so pleased to join forces. But um, the first one is sort of like going to what I was saying about being that personal, personalized service and keeping that personal element as we scale because we want to we want to work with tens of millions of people around the world but we still want to be like that person at the end of the phone so that's a challenge but then alongside that is recognizing that every person in wherever they are in the world they have their own cultures their own needs or wants everyone's unique um and so just practically to manufacture things to make things that are locally applicable um but also made at scale is quite an interesting challenge and that's obviously a lot of yeah. your guys expertise um and it's like finding that balance i think that will be interesting as we grow um yeah, you know, <clears throat> yeah. localized you know 
It's good. It's just a di- it's a different way of scaling and and look. It, we know it's it's it comes with challenges, but I, I guess the big upside of of that approach is you are also building pretty big barriers to to entry to competition. Um, so um, so yeah, so so it, it can work very well in your favour. Um, and just to finish up, do you want to sort of what's your vision, sort of five years time or so for Koala? Where do you want to be? What do you want to have achieved? I mean, I think definitely it's always at its core. Our, our heart goes with reaching as many people as possible. It's about access to people that couldn't have it before. Um, so I'd love to see Koala in five years time being in like, you know, 50 different countries, you know, more. Um, sort of balancing that with making new products and new services, sure. But I think I would be disappointed if we had this cool range of offerings, but it was only available for rich countries in the West. That would suck. We'd like to be around the world and and touching lots of different cultures and lives and no, that's good <clears throat> you, you're you'll be judged on your success by the number of lives you've improved yes it's no that's no that's no bad thing it's it but you set the bar high <laughs> got it we always say we want to be in more countries than the un so <laughs> that's the <laughs> that's the end goal aim we'll see very good nate been a pleasure catching up with you and we uh, we're really excited to be supporting you and, and being part of the koala journey Oh, I'm stoked, David. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot.